Well, well, informations on how people can avoid catching COVID-19 highlight the need for regular hand washing with soap and uh, running water and the practice of social distancing. That shouldn't be too difficult for the many who have fairly decent accommodation and access to utilities. Same, however, cannot be said of those living in some of Ghana's most densely populated communities where living conditions do not permit. My colleague Justice Bedu has spent time at Old Fadama to find out what a coronavirus pandemic means for the country's most vulnerable. In the room where people used to come for health care, hands are now raised in prayer, hoping that could save a community of over 100,000 people from the venom of a global pandemic that has now infected nearly a million people and killed over 35,000. Once upon a time, this was the only health facility providing health care for the thousands of people who live here in Old Fadama. This was run by a private citizen. Once the man who led this facility died, Healthcare in Old Fadama died too. And in its place is this rundown infrastructure taken over by filth and also churches. This is Ghana's biggest shanty town, a mixed bag enclave bustling with life. Old Fadama is badly overcrowded and coronavirus. If it does strike here, will do damage. Everyone knows, but people must eat. That's why they all came here after all. Here we are crowded, crowded, very, very crowded. Here, social distancing is a rare privilege only a few can afford. There are no sanitizers and no running water even if people wanted to wash their hands. This, my leg was worrying me. I can't wear boots. They say, I should take time that I shouldn't get any sore. Israel Agbenu has already been diagnosed with diabetes. And with no hospital here, he travels outside the slum to see a doctor every week. This coronavirus, we don't know why it is. But you know here, most of us, we are illiterate. If Somebody's sicker, unless you have to go to Kolebu before you get taxi. But in Otezi, they don't, some of them, they don't want to come in. If you beg them, they will not come in. At that time, maybe something can happen. So at times, we put the person at the back, up to the roadside, to take money, drop into some place to some place. If I don't have that money, I'll make quiet, I'll make quiet and die. But not everywhere in Ghana looks like Ogfadama. Medifem Hospital, good morning, I'm speaking. This is the Medifem Multi-Specialist Fertility Center, one of the few upmarket private hospitals in Accra. Located in one of its affluent neighborhoods, quality health care is available if you have the money to pay. And here, they seem very ready for COVID-19. There is this, this difference between the poor and those who can afford, or the poorly resourced and those who can afford it. And those, the poorly resourced, even to get access to the public hospital, it is not easy. You have to get into some four means of transport to get to the public facility. When, when you get there, you've got to queue for a very long time, uh, which engenders the spread of the infection. Deeper inequities in our health system are going to be very exposed in this COVID-19 period and post-COVID-19. We've made the system run as it has with fewer or less number, numbers of people enrolled on the National Health Insurance Scheme, which would have provided financial access to people. We haven't provided over time sufficient infrastructure to support a situation like the COVID-19. Every tribe is, here, is, is in this community. You see, so if you are there as a, a, a millionaire, you are there. And then they are building the facility for them. 
anything happen to this community, it will affect all of them. Because we have the Kaya, if the, the people, they, they come down from the Medina, or even president, they, 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 they do market here. You see, and they use the Kaya, carry my pan for me. You know, and if, so if one is affected, affected you carry it to, uh, to your own place as, as well. COVID-19 is spreading like wildfire. And experts warn it's only a matter of when and not if that it would arrive here in Old Fadama. Everyone here knows that. What they do not know is if they, like Ghana's privileged few, would ever be ready for it. Justice Pedu, join News, Old Fadama. And now joining us via Skype to talk about the Old Fadama situation, which Justice just reported on, is Dr. Michael Ousu. He's a virologist with KNUST. Now, Dr. Michael Ousu, looking at the Old Fadama situation, what do we see happening should one person have COVID-19 in this area? Yeah, so one person have COVID-19, you, you can straight away uh, know that every, every, everyone else will get it. So for, for people living in slums, uh, you, you expect the other routes of transmission to be activated. There are two portals through which coronavirus can be transmitted. One, through the respiratory routes. And then in about 30% of infected people, they can transmit it through the fecal routes. So you are dealing with two things. Uh, apart from the fact that because they are so close together and living um, so much crowded in one place, if one person has it, sneezing, coughing, uh, I mean, having respiratory droplets, could easily be transmitted to, to, to them. But then the more difficult aspect is that if somebody has coronaviruses, and you knowing that 30% of people can share it through their stool, what it means is that hygienic practices, I mean, Anywhere you have these two samples passed through, there is a high, a high chance that it's going to transmit much, much faster than the, than the ordinary population of people are well separated. So I think that this is, this is a conducive environment for this virus to thrive. And the earlier we begin to look at this and to solve it, the better for us. Else, uh, it can really trigger into a huge outbreak if you have this circulated within such communities. Now, Dr. Michael Usu, would you have any suggestions how we can avoid a situation where that one person will get it in a community like this? Yes, yeah, so uh, uh, like I always have been suggesting, tackling coronavirus should be a multifaceted approach. It's not just looking at it from the public health perspective, but then you need all on board. Uh, what is needed at this time is that such communities must be discongested. If it's possible, we may have to begin to think about getting some some houses or some rooms available where these people will move in and then begin to close these temporary facilities where, I mean, so they don't serve as grounds for this to thrive. And the fact about coronavirus is that it's not just about them. They may think it's just about them, but it's not just about them. Because once they get it, because they interact with multiple people, it's only a matter of time and you can have this trigger around. So. As part of addressing this from a holistic perspective, slums, people living in slums, people living in crowded areas, people living in places where safe water is, is not available, where um, um, ventilation is a problem, where toiletry facilities are also not available. These places, we need to all look at it and, and devise a strategy to be able to tackle this once and for all. Because if you don't do that, it will only serve as an environment where viruses can thrive and can be a reservoir through which many transmissions can occur. So I think that we will, we will need the government to really look at slums, in, especially in Accra and Kumasi, and to devise a plan for decongesting these slums as soon as possible before it becomes unbearable for all of us. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Michael Usu. He's a virologist with the KNUST. Yes.